bit weak, actually. A bit weak. I can see through it, you know, maybe I'll see. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's like taking a vodka shot of coffee. <laughs> Me and my brother once, we this is like when soon when he moved into his house. Yeah. We um we made coffee, got percolator, so yeah. it's like, oh we'll we'll crack it on. We made it and it was so strong that it smelled like whiskey. <laughs> and know. we had to throw it out and we just couldn't figure out like we hadn't put that much in. Yeah. We didn't think we had it and it just smelled like whiskey. Was... To be fair, like quit like that does taste pretty alcoholic, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. No wonder you you know. Got withdrawals. Got withdrawals. <laughs> I think everyone should go through that. That was fun. You didn't look it. Like, <laughs> it was something that I was like yeah, actively I'm, trying to avoid. I'm a sucker for punishment. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. And, you know, James Charles Smith. Hello. I don't know what to describe you as. Uh, nothing. <laughs> like, nothing? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. I, I don't know, you did like, you, you've been to uni and stuff. You yeah, know, I did, did uh, game design. Yeah. You know, so, so I could class you that. Is that. As a game designer. Yeah, why not? Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Professional come game designer. here and lie. <laughs> I think when I had Jack on, he just said he was a pirate. So <laughs> <laughs> you, you can literally, you know. It's, it's the anonymity of the internet. Says, I am Tony Stark. Yeah, that's it. fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll monopolize off the Thanos uh, situation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Sad that as your tagline, you'll get like a <laughs> hundred, and then a, an attractive girl as the thumbnail. Yeah, that yeah. is the way to do Just, YouTube. Yeah, how it's done. I have debated using myself as an attractive girl. Uh, as my thumbnail. I mean, shirt off. I mean, yeah. Like how? Shirt off. Say no. Bounce out. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll abuse YouTube a little bit. Yeah. I was watching, oh, what was that? I was reading Reddit the other yeah. day, and there was some, I follow Mad Lads, right. like the, the Reddit sub forum, yeah. where it's basically just like people pretending to be hardcore, but they're not. Oh. Um, and there was some kid who posted a video, and it was something along the lines of, I hate PewDiePie, and, and fuck PewDiePie, and all this kind of stuff. And then you read the description, yeah. and it was just like, I don't actually think any of these things, I just thought it would be a really good way to get food. Please don't hate me. <laughs> what? <laughs> I've noticed that a lot on Reddit, like, the top posts are just absolute, like, lies, and <laughs> they're just, like, in the comments, and then they'll put something else, and it'll just be like, no, I don't really mean this. I always love, like, there's a little, what we call, like, trickle effect with Reddit, where you get, so, like, you see a meme, like, kind of get born, Yeah. and then two days later it'll be in the news. Yeah. Like, the news will eventually pick up on it and decide that that's worthy of, like, a news story, and at the minute it's like, have you seen the one which is, like, corner cabinets? Uh, no. So this is this is the new new Reddit thing, which is corner cabinets and like people's like kitchen units and the different corner cabinets you can have. Right. <laughs> and there's there's literally no reason for it. There's no explanation for it. I don't know how it started, but there's just been shitloads of like pictures of corner cabinets. People just like pulling out their open corner cabinets. They're like, oh, look at this one. I mean, I might get on the bandwagon of that. I've got you got several? a corner cabinet. I've got two. <laughs> Is that a fancy one? No, it falls out. <laughs> like, I've not opened it you since. You should definitely, you should <laughs> just, just do like, the video oh, <laughs> and just walk it away. It's like, I've not had it I've been in this house, like, what, like, four, three months? Yeah. And not opened that cabinet because the first time I did it, there was just a massive crash. I was like, nope, there could be anything in there. Like, whatever was in there when I, like, moved in is still in that that's, door. That's going to be the reclamation of, of that meme. Yeah. You need to get on the meme game. Just... Like falling down just in the sink, caving falling in. Down and collapsing. A load bearing the end corner cabinet. <laughs> the corner cabinet disaster, which it could be. Yeah. I do love that when like the news picks up on something way after. Yeah. It's just such a great thing to be like, yeah, I, I've already seen that like three months ago. And I, I in some ways, I kind of understand it because yeah. I, I know like news sources are meant to in some way verify their sources yeah. <laughs> whereas in there obviously it doesn't rely on that so you just go oh no I've seen this and then everyone <laughs> freaks out about it and then like two days later it's like oh yeah that was fake okay. the thing I love best about when the quote on memes is when they like verify the source so yeah. like there's the original post and I remember something I can't remember what the exact meme was but the ed uh, the author of the meme was something like handjob solo <laughs> And they actually put that in the newspaper. It was like created by Handjob Solo, and I was like, "That shows the pinnacle." I was watching, um, I was watching like Twitch mistakes. 
the other day and there was a great one where it was like someone's live Twitch stream and obviously like people come down hard on like banning yeah. stuff where it's like offensive or anything yeah. like that and someone was making donations and trying to get curse words into the donation name so they had to read it out yeah. and basically there was just some guy on camera and he was like really excited really like positive about everything and he was like oh such and such thanks for thanks for your donation and it'd be just like some some like like mike hunt yeah but he it, it'd be more obscure because they were really trying to like trick him into yeah. reading it and he fell for it like every time and he's there just like oh, God damn it. the guy next to him just like why why are you even <laughs> falling with this oh it's so obvious oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah i do I, I think it's just like what we're in now where it's like anyone can try and be famous with the accessibility of twitch and stuff like you just get so much fun out of it because there's that much going on that it's just you're bound to find these little gems of just mistakes yeah that wouldn't have happened it's i don't know it's such a weird thing i feel like because i know people have chased fame for like forever yeah it's not a new thing yeah and i know they they say that our, our generation's like more narcissistic than any other generation which has come before us or yeah. that kind of thing it's because we have social media so we can so we can indulge it yeah. essentially we've always had that option yeah. to put like not as much as like the new generation is going to yeah. have I think that's going to be even I don't know like for them are they going to learn from the mistakes that we made or because I mean we didn't really make mistakes though <laughs> not much but like we we were the testing generation of it all oh, we've always been the testing this is yeah. what we're, we're discussing like coming up with the content like topic to discuss weren't we yeah it's like we're we're, we're the same age aren't we yeah i so think we're about a year yeah. Yeah. yeah i'm 27 yeah 27 nearly 28 and i'm almost 29 yeah, <laughs> yeah i know it's, it's depressing <laughs> it? brain just kind of <laughs> clicks over that one but yeah so we're, we're the same, exactly the same generation and we were just like that whole i think we're a very strange generation yeah in a way and I know, I, I imagine most generations think that. Like, you talk yeah. to, like, older brothers and sisters or, like, parents, and they all think, yeah, our generation was the hard Yeah. One. But we really have been the tester generation. Like, oh, yeah. Anytime a new concept has come through, it's yeah. been like, oh, yeah, we'll try it on that year group. Yeah. And that was, like, the thing in school. Like, we had every year group I was in, I can almost guarantee that they trialed a new way of teaching Yeah. on our, our, our group. Like, we went into, like... The only one which I can think would be consistent would be maybe infant school. I like yeah. went into infant school. That was all fine. Went into primary school. Yeah. And as soon as I got into primary school, they started introducing like new ways of grading people, and yeah. new ways of teaching maths. And we were like trial on that and then went through that all the way through to year six. Got to year six and they changed the entire system yeah. to the point where we changed exam board. <laughs> went into senior school thinking this is all going to be fine yeah. and they did it again like yeah. every year there was just some new thing which like oh yeah we're going to try this now yeah. and we're like well how are we ever going to be consistent if you just keep changing everything <laughs> well like with the whole like PC-ness and stuff it's yeah. like even the words in this change like from like year to year with us like I remember the day that we weren't allowed to use brainstorm anymore <laughs> for like mapping out stuff. So it was like it just it's a mind map it more, though. Yeah. every time someone's like, oh, like no it's a brainstorm <laughs> yeah because that's what it is. Uh, it was always great, though, because, like, I, I'm dyslexic, like, heavily. So, like, when I was at school, uh, like, one of my mates would take it out of me and said to me, I can't remember where it were. But then, like, my tutor came up and she was like, no, that's offensive, you can't do that. And then she literally grabbed me by the hand and was like, right, come on, we're going to special needs class. And I was like, how is that not? <laughs> like, that's fine. Yeah. But my mate calling me an idiot, that yeah. was not... I was like... It was a weird transition to be having special needs, for lack of a better word, yeah. whilst in that generation, because people didn't know really how to go about it. Yeah. I remember when I got diagnosed, uh, my, te- uh, like my teacher at the time, she started crying yeah. because of it, yeah. She used to, because she like, used to say that I was lazy and that I didn't do anything because I just didn't want to and stuff. Yeah. Then it came out, I was dyslexic. So she literally broke down in tears in front of the class. A, a regret moment, like, yeah. instantly. But like, incredible. obviously for me, I was like, score, like, yeah, pass. Just like, validate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's right. I've been <laughs> telling you. <laughs> but yeah, that's, it was... That's so strange. Yeah. I think it's, it's a weird one. Yeah, it's definitely been strange. Like, I mean, obviously technology and stuff is growing. But yeah, yeah, watching like the the PC stuff ramp up. Because yeah. I, I, I vividly remember being in primary school and teachers using words like retarded. Yeah, oh, like, all the time. 
that are, are spastic. Yeah. Like that. Those are like everyday words. Yeah. And like we were kids, so we were obviously learning that, but we knew it was wrong. Yeah. To some extent, because we could see it coming in. Yeah. But then, yeah, like that was a, that was a standardized term for people. <laughs> well, retarded still actually a term. I think yeah. it's more in America. Yeah. That um like because I re- university I think and one of my friends he studied psychology yeah. and he said retarded or something and I was like I, I'm really not like I'm kind of in the thing is like if you're not meaning it offensively yeah. sometimes things are alright but when yeah, he I said it but yeah. yeah no no like I don't mean like obviously some no, words are off the conversation yeah. Yeah. but um, <laughs> like like I said like retard and stuff like sometimes it's a bit for that, like, it's one of mine, like, I've been called it a lot, so yeah. sometimes it cuts a bit deep. Yeah. Um, Because I go, like, with my dyslexia, I've said to everyone, every time they learn about it, they're always a bit shocked, and they're always like, oh, you know, stay away, and I'm always like, honestly, take the mic, it's, you know, yeah. I can't spell, <laughs> it's fine, don't worry about it. Um, But, like, my mate said it, and I was like, can you put that in, like, your dissertation? And he's yeah. like, oh, yeah, it's an actual medical term yeah, for it. Definitely. And I was like, how is that still... Like, with all the political correctnesses that's gone off, how is that one still a... I mean, I guess in a way that's a good thing. Because mm-hmm. I think with, especially, I think I think it was brought up in, like, Rick and Morty. Yeah. Where he uses it and, and Morty kind of chastises him for it. And he's like, yeah. well, no, that's just, that's the thing. Yeah. And it's, it's one of those where the word has become such a kind of, like, a social taboo. Yeah. That so many people just are uncomfortable using it in general. Yeah. Even despite it being something which is used in like medical yeah. dictionaries and then yeah i think it was just because it was kind of like a catch-all yeah that was the problem with it yeah it was a catch-all for literally everything so everyone used it for everything yeah and it, it just became one of those ones of like well no as we learn more and yeah. it became more normal for medical and mental health issues to be yeah out there people were just like tried to drag it back but yeah. just stopped using it entirely yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was just like no we'll just cut this one out i don't care about this one yeah. It's, it's so strange yeah but then see there's a question like so obviously we were saying like kids and like obviously narcissism and wanting to be famous and stuff yeah and then mental health's obviously risen yeah. as, a, as a major thing yeah but chasing fame's not seen as a mental health issue yeah and I'm like I'm fine with people chasing recognition but the ways in which people kind of degrade themselves to seek rec- recognition yeah that's what concerns me yeah, it, like, I'm quite sceptical, like, more, less with YouTube, because it is, like, people just been, like, they've got a form of putting themselves out there, Yeah. so then they'll do something stupid, like, stuff like um, X Factor and stuff, where they go on, and I'm not sure how much of that is put on, Yeah. which makes me sceptical, like, you know, the like, YouTube side of stuff really X does get suffers, well, I say it suffers, X Factor profits from editing. Yeah, in the same way that like Big Brother profits from editing, it's yeah. like it's it's edited drama. Yeah, like none of it's real. Yeah, the people are real, but like the the arguments, the fights, yeah. it's it's all fabrication. Oh yeah, it's all. It's like it might have happened, but it didn't happen in the dramatic circumstances. Yeah, and it's you can usually tell it's like when they add um, non diegetic music to it. And it's like no, yeah, they're increasing the tension. They're toying with you yeah. through editing. That's that's kind of how it goes. But yeah, I mean. Because what it makes me think of is like when you so like when you were at school, and you'd have that kid who would do something, which. It didn't. It always seemed kind of like they lacked self-respect. Yeah. To get attention, so it's like the kid who eats bugs. Yeah. Or like the kid who gets themselves hurt, and it's like, when you saw that as a kid, you were like, "This is stupid." Yeah. This guy's a bit stupid. <laughs> this girl just wants attention, but now. Because it's on like a, an internet platform, yeah. it's like no, this is entertainment, and I'm just kind of saying that's like no, it's still the same sad kid. Yeah. It's just like a worldwide audience now, though. Uh, yeah, I mean you've had that with like Jackass for. See, like, I, I couldn't watch Jackass. Like, I, there's very few, little of Jackass yeah. I could watch comfortably. Yeah, like I'm, I'm okay with some of Jackass, like the vomit and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I'm just like, no, that's too far. Like the stunts, I like, and like when they're just mates dicking around. Yeah. Like, Bam don't like snakes, so every single time they've got a chance to put some snakes on him, yeah. they do, which is funny. Like, yeah. So, like, it's that kind of stuff that I kind of like, the, you know, the sick and stuff's a bit, yeah. like... But I suppose it's the same as that, but, like, obviously they've got 
professional yeah. medical teams. Well, that's, that's the difference, <laughs> isn't it? It's like this is all well, like a lot of it will be well thought out, yeah. planned. There's medical teams, there's people on hand to help them. Yeah. They were adults when they started doing it. Yeah. And that's the kind of thing. It's like, but then there's a really interesting um, podcast actually with Steve O. No. And he goes really in depth of like his childhood and like how much damage mm. he's done to himself and all this kind of stuff. And he was like, yeah, it's cool. I was the kid who would do anything yeah. to get attention. You know, you want me to eat a nickel, I'll eat a nickel. You, know, <laughs> you want me to throw up, I will throw up. Yeah. But, it was, but he, he fully recognizes that he did it because he had a bad home yeah. life. And he's like, as he got older, he just kept doing it. Mm. And it's like, it's weird that we've kind of become this place of that's, that's just a thing now. Yeah. That's, that's never, you know, you, you meet your kids and like, no, I want to be YouTube stars. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's good because it's ambitious. Yeah. But how you achieve it yeah. <laughs> is the other side. I'm like, mm, but it's know. like that story that we were talking about a while back with the two, the, the girl and her husband, I think, or boyfriend, when she shot him. Oh yeah. It's because like they tried like, to stop it with a bike. Yeah. yeah. It's like when that that's when it gets too far out of hand. It's like you should know that a bullet's going to kill you. Yeah. Kind of thing. That that's that's chase for fame coupled with stupidity. Yeah. And it's like, because that's the thing, like, you can't even blame that on ignorance. Yeah. Like, that's a standard thing. That's a gun. Yeah. And that's a person. Yeah. You shoot them, that's, and to me, it's like, you can't blame that on ignorance. You can't. It's like, it wasn't even, a, like, a small gun. No, like, that's like not, yeah. Or something, it was a like, Desert Eagle. It's like, <laughs> it's got a hand cannon. It's like, it's like there's a hand cannon. I'm going to shoot you. Okay, it's going to stop by this book. No, it's not. That's, yeah. that's just, you know. But then at the same time with that, like, obviously, that brings up a whole issue of the US and gun laws. You know, you shouldn't yeah. be able to get hold of a Desert Eagle for to shoot your partner with. <laughs> so um, why do you want this gun? Oh, we're going to do a YouTube thing. Yeah. Um, when he's going to hold a book in front of him. It's like, yeah, you don't want to do that. <laughs> Just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. When they asked him the question, what are you doing it for? <laughs> YouTube stunts. No. I wonder if that is a question you get asked when you buy a gun. No. Yeah. I know they ask a lot of questions. They should. They do not. run, like, they run background checks. Yeah. They, they run, like, mental health background checks. Yeah. So you, if you have a mental health issue and it's logged, you can't have a gun. Yeah. And there's like you think criminal record, you can't have a gun, or you can't buy it from a legitimate gun store. Yeah, that's generally the rule. But I do wonder if they ask them what they're using it for. Yeah, it's like why do you want this gun? <laughs> just just explain it to me, and we'll we'll go through this. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could probably just say home protection, but it'd probably catch a few people out. Well, yeah, I mean, there's I know when you go into America, there's one of the questions on the sheet is, are you coming to commit terrorist acts? Yeah, and it's like, who's been sat there and gone? Actually, yes, I am. So I need to tick that. Like, it's got to have caught someone out for it, it to still have, be in the to, test. For it to, maybe it's just because it's like, when it gets to that question, it's just to see whether they sweat. Yeah. Like, it's, it's like, oh. Just you know, hovering over So Sorry, your name? Yeah, cool. Where you from? Yeah, that's, that's cool. Reason for visiting? <laughs> Terrorist acts. No, I'm here for holding. <laughs> <laughs> They're just gradually watching you, like, he paused the toe. It's like, <laughs> yes, and then they're crossing it out. <laughs> it's, it's so... Change my mind. Have you, have you been to the US? Uh, no, I, I've been to Mexico. Which is close. I really want to go to Mexico. Well, I went to Mexico for, like, five minutes. Because we went on a cruise around right. South America. Uh, yeah, South America. Yeah. Um, and we went to, like, loads of different islands, and Mexico was one of the stops. I'd and hmm? I'd love to go to yeah, and like as we got off the boat, my sister stubbed her toe on the "Welcome to Mexico" sign. So, <laughs> yeah. so they Sorry. literally dragged <laughs> her back to the boat and charged us like hundred and fifty quid to clean it and put a plaster on it, and then said because it's contaminated, you're not allowed to go back because it was during this time when there was some weird, like, <laughs> thing going off, and was like, oh, well, okay. Oh, that's crazy. So that was my Mexico experience. I mean, how long ago was that? Yeah, I'd have been probably about 13. Yeah. So, like, cause it's, that's the strange thing. Like, Mexico's one of those places where it's changed so much yeah. in the last decade. Yeah. Like, we think of Mexico, we think of standard Tijuana, you know? Mm. Paper mache pears, some, like, hats. Yeah. You know, tourist town, which would be Tijuana. And then the last 10 years, it's just become, like, this haven for drug cartels. <laughs> All that kind of stuff. And I think, did I tell you, like, because I mentioned Trevor Marty recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. did I tell you the Mexico story? No. Which the, he's got oh, this wait, great stand-up that... where he's like, I'm yeah, not think... going to Mexico. Yeah, yeah. And how he never wants to go to Mexico <laughs> ever again. It's because, yeah, he's still in that view of, you know, it's, it's Tijuana. Yeah. We'll nip down to Tijuana, we'll spend time across the border, and it's not. It's, I mean, it's it was pretty bad when we went, because I remember the only thing that, like, you went all to take food and stuff in, because oh. you had to leave it in this bowl. And the other thing was, no Americans. Yeah. So, like... We were all going off, and like all Americans were just getting stopped. 
And they were like, no, for your own safety, you're not allowed in this country, kind of thing. And they were just like, oh, yeah. right, okay. So they had to stay on the boat. It's, it's quite a strange thing, like, especially when you think of the US. As, yeah. as, as close as we are with the US, there is places Americans can't go. Yeah. Because of the way America is. It's like they could, like, taking an American to somewhere like Iran yeah. or Afghanistan, even just like a visit. Yeah. That's way more dangerous than taking an English person. Yeah. It's like, that's crazy. Like, we're, we're fighting over there as well. We've been just as bad, but now, because of the attitude America attacked with. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know. It's even, like, even around Europe. Like, I know Europe hates us, but compared to the US. <laughs> yeah. Thing is, we've had a long-standing hate with people. Yeah. Like, we're, people we're, have tolerated for us for a while. I, I think that's like about it. England has this thing of, we we're kind of seen as, yeah, we're that old bully. <laughs> yeah. It's like, we used to bully everybody. And now we're just kind of because we pulled back a little yeah. bit. Everyone was like, "All right." We're now just that grumpy old man yeah. that sits there moaning about what you used to just, have. That's just England. That's he's, he's set in his ways. And, you know, you can't really get out of it. It's like the grandparent who's slightly racist. Yeah, <laughs> he, he tries to be tolerant. Then all of a sudden, gradually learning. Eventually, he'll be replaced, and the new generation will take over. But that's the, that's the just a thing of like. Our generation. I feel like our entire generation is waiting for the oldest generation to die. Yeah. At the moment, it seems seem, because that seems like we're playing the long game. Yeah. We're playing that weirdly long game where we're like, no. Essentially, we just need them to die because <laughs> they're not going to change. Well, I, I do like it because it, it is the thing that all generations do where they blame the next generation. So yeah. like, we're getting blamed for a lot of the stuff now, but we're not exactly in a position where we've made choices yet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, like, all our choices have yet to make consequences. So, like, even to the things like, you know, Brexit and stuff. Yeah. Like, a lot of that wasn't to do with the generation that we're in. It was a The both. older generation. Yeah. yeah. So, like, it's things like that that makes me laugh when there's, like, news slagging off our generation and being like, oh, they can't make good decisions. Yeah. They're lazy. They're doing this. And we're just like, yeah, but we're just waiting to... For you to stop making the bad decisions. <laughs> it's like we've not been a you've not actually put us in a position of power yet. Yeah. Um it's, it's that whole it's that whole millennial thing. Like again, because like, 'cause we're the tester generation. So yeah. like you got the baby boomers who blame us for yeah. everything. Yeah. Because that's what you do. You blame the younger generation. It happened to them. Yeah. It happened to us. It all, I've started, we hate yeah. the people underneath us. Yeah. That's that's just the, the thing. But then the people underneath us hate us as well. Yeah. Because they see us as adults. Yeah. So we're part of the problem. And you're like we're well, not because we can't do it. <laughs> we don't have the high tier jobs because they're all like fifty. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have the low tier jobs because we can't get jobs. <laughs> it's just yeah, it's such a strange kind of like turnaround. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, we just I, yeah, it's it's such a morbid thought that we're just literally waiting for everyone to die. Yeah. Well, it's the, it's the thing like you said though, like the the younger generation now sees us as an adult, yeah. and like I just don't see myself as an adult still. I'm like 27 and I still, it, it's that thing that you learn when you get older, that you never feel like an adult. Yeah. You're always just is, pretending to be an adult. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird one, especially when you're in your 20s. Yeah. So, I mean, like the other day, so 28, 27. Yeah. Do you feel old? No. No. I feel old. Yeah. I feel really old. Well, like, I'm starting to, like, it's the reason I've started, like, trying to go on a diet to make yeah. myself, you know, put on some weight because of them. Then I've noticed, like... I'm getting a lot less, like, when I'm walking to the shop and starting to feel out of breath and stuff, so yeah. I've started exercising. So you've noticed, the, like, the change where you're, like, I'm not as I'm yeah. not, as, not as fit as I used to be. Yeah. But then I know, like, obviously, so we're, like, 20, but then to someone who's 40, yeah. that's insulting. <laughs> yeah. Almost that you feel, because you must see them as, like, dinosaurs. <laughs> and I'm like, I know I'm not old, yeah. but I'm still old. <laughs> yeah. I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm starting the slow deterioration <laughs> into, you know, constant yeah. pain. <laughs> Well, it's like, for me, it's like, I've got like four, four nieces now. Yeah. And um, like, so I'll look after them from time to time and say, like, we were in a pub the other day and they were in play zone a bit. Yeah. And one of them were running around. And so I like went in and was like, are you all right? What are you doing? And then this other girl just came up to me and pulled on my leg and she was like, oh, she's trying to take my sweets. And I was like, what do you want me to do about it? And then I realised, like, I'm the adult. Don't be adult. <laughs> yeah, I was like, normally I'd just go and get somebody else. But yeah. at that situation, I had to be like, take her to one side and be like, no, this is not why you can't do it. And it's like, it was a real weird 
it's such a strange thing. It's like the one which gets me is when you go to like uh, a restaurant yeah. or a shop, yeah. and they're like, "Oh," and they call you sir. Yeah. And I'm stood there thinking, "Well, I, I get that I'm technically a sir, but this is weird yeah. for you to be this respectful, respectful for me, especially because if then yeah, you go to the counter and you're like, you know, they're 18. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, it's, it's like a, it's like a big age gap here. Yeah. To you, I'm an adult. <laughs> I'm not an adult because I don't own my own house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm blatantly just going to buy cookies after this. <laughs> I think that's it. Like, don't have children. <laughs> one of the points when I realised that I'm growing up is because, like, I, I was quite late to the adult life. Right. <laughs> so, like, up until about a year ago, I didn't have a job, I didn't have a house, and, you know, yeah. didn't have anything. And then, quite quickly, I just got thrown into it, which was quite jarring. Yeah. And then... Like, like say, I've got this house where I'm living on my own now and I'm doing like adult stuff. Like yeah. I'll be going to the shop and getting my own shopping and then like I'm got to go and get some trimmers to, you know, do garden and stuff. And I'm like, it's really weird just being out. I mean, like, this is my own thing yeah. where I'm just in my own adult life. And it's, I know at 27, it's weird. But, uh, I, don't, but, I don't think it's that weird. I think there was a thing I saw this morning, literally, um, where someone was saying, um, it was aimed at women, and it was like, ladies, you, you're so proud of being independent. Yeah. Being independent is literally the basic except, like expectation of being an adult. Yeah. Don't, stop shouting about it. Sort of <laughs> and I was just like, it's, yeah, it's a strange thing. Like, we, you know, we chat about it. We're like, no, we're doing proper adulting today. Yeah. That's an achievement. It's like, that, how is that an achievement? <laughs> yeah. <That's> the, <laughs> like we've got to a stage when just being existing in, as an adult is now like, yeah, I'm fucking proud. <laughs> it's like, no, that's just, you do that. <laughs> you get all of that standard. I mean, to be fair, I, I am like that. I, I take my bins out and I'm proud of myself. I'm like, I, re- I remembered that it's a Tuesday. Is that great? I, I don't know, really. <laughs> so, this, this thing, like, so obviously as a kid, yeah. right, there's a stage when you're a kid where you you, you realised you weren't a child anymore. Yeah. And that's quite a hard thing to kind of come to terms with sometimes when you're a kid. Like, you don't want to be older. Yeah. Or you want to be older. and But then as, like, you roll into your 20s, at some point you realise that you're not like a teenager anymore yeah. and you've started doing kind of adult shit which is harder yeah like it's like which which is I don't know which one is be, be more emotionally jarring like realising that you're not a baby yeah or realising that you're not free <laughs> yeah I mean I don't like I feel like I've got more free like when I was a kid hmm. like I just used to sit and play video games and that was more even up until like 17, 18, I, I literally, I went out skating and BMX with my mates and that, but my priority was just playing games. Um, but it was mainly because I looked really young, so I couldn't go out and, you know, go out park and drink cider or go to nightclubs underage. Like, there was no way I was getting in. Yeah. So, like, I never felt that I'm not... I think that's one of the reasons why I don't feel it now, is because... Yeah. It's only recently, like, my mate keeps texting me it, every single year with some bit of trivia reminding me how old I am. So, like, <laughs> literally, when we was out on New Year's, yeah. the first thing my mate texted me was, just to let you know, people this year that was born on 2000s can now really, really drink. Yeah. And I was like, shit, that was 18 years ago. And that just made me feel like I remember the whole Y2K incident kind yeah. of thing when everyone was going mental about this thing that had never happened. Yeah. And it's just like stuff like that that really makes me like... I, I think that that is something I use as like a <clears throat> kind of like a timeline marker Yeah. of how well I'm probably going to get along with someone. Mm. If, they, if they can't remember the millennium, yeah. then I know it's going to be at least a challenge yeah. to get conversation kind of going yeah. because you, you just references for life in general are so different yeah and you kind of like unless we have some like common interests like for me like obviously art and stuff yeah there's going to be a problem yeah like i can't talk to someone who has no interest in art and doesn't remember yeah <laughs> millennium because i'm just like that's like yeah we have nothing in <laughs> common that's the two things you know, i like there's two things i like unless you're into music this is going to go badly yeah. <laughs> like there's no way that it's going to stop and do well it's just weird like them things because it's it, it's just them things that you you think that are just common knowledge yeah it's like when I think uh, there was the 9-11 yeah. like thing going off and then there were a lot of news stories about um, 
like American schools putting on plays like we dance acts for it. And they went absolutely crazy because they were like, this is offensive and stuff. But then they were like, these kids don't know. Kind of they weren't in the generation that... Yeah, you don't remember. So yeah, so can't. to them it was just some event like yeah. the World War or something that people do kind of stuff like this for. Yeah. And then I was just thinking, geez, I remember being sat watching that happen. The one which so I always kind of mirror with that is like, for, for us obviously we had 9-11. Yeah. But before, just before we were born, there was yeah. the Berlin Wall. Yeah. And to us that was a thing. Yeah. No, But that was before we were born. Yeah. Or it was just as we were born because it was 89. And you kind of like that again, like, the Berlin Wall. That was ages ago, yeah. you know? That was the whole thing with that to your parents. Like, no, that was like, I was in my 20s. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that was, a, no. that was a pretty prevalent thing, which was happening, you know, in Berlin and, and the segregated country. And you <laughs> suddenly go, nah, that was, that was like, that's old tiny yeah. dudes. <laughs> this is, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, I mean, I guess for, for other people it would be like, because like the 7-7 thing happened in yeah. London. And that was quite a, like a, a big thing for... Yeah. people and that was a few years afterwards yeah but every, everyone always has like one event yeah like where they know where they were or yeah. have like a major impact and that you realize the world was bigger yeah than what you were in i think yeah i think that's the main point with them kind of events it's yeah. when it just it makes you realize that it's not just your little bubble yes yeah. and yeah. The, the outside world affects yeah affects your interior world that yeah. kind of thing um oh, what th- this oh, it's gonna bug me now there's a line which i'm trying to think of um, there's, a, there's a song I can't remember for the life of me can't think of the song uh, but it's on about like it's initially on about the um, like black culture in the US yeah. and like Reagan in the 80s and how they like introduced cocaine into neighbourhoods and, and basically fueled the drug yeah. industry and all that kind of stuff and the, there's a guy called Oliver North who was arrested for selling goods, guns to Iran and yeah. all this kind of stuff and there's a whole whole conspiracy and yeah. other, other culture thing but he's just saying how even though he was like 13 you knew that shit had changed. Yeah. Everything was different because this had happened. Like some major power had happened and there'd been a tragedy and all this kind of stuff. And I remember vividly being in school and the uh, march, which happened just before the Iraq war, yeah. when there was like a million people in London and like every newspaper headline was millions march for peace. Don't yeah. want to go to a war with Iraq. Do not want to go to war with Iraq. And then we went to war with Iraq. And even though I was like, so there, I'm like, I'm 13. I'm like, yeah. This is the world. Yeah. This is this is everything's different now. Like there's that realization of you had everything. You know, you had your politics, you had this kind of thing. But it's like no, this is this is how this world works. Yeah. And your brain just goes, what? <laughs> <laughs> Where do I stand? <laughs> like, yeah. how, how do I deal with this? And then it, yeah, obviously like obviously nine nine eleven had happened prior to that. Yeah. And yeah, everything just kind of came to collapse in the space of like a year yeah. of, of learning that the world is out there. <laughs> I think that's what I think. Like. It's like, did it collapse or did we just noticed it collapsed? It's... I think it, I mean, that's the thing. So I don't think the world's gone any worse. Yeah. That's, that's my general opinion of yeah. the world, is that the world has not gone any worse in the last 50 years yeah. than it was 50 years ago. It has improved in many ways. Yeah. The only reason it looks worse is because it's not more noticeable. Yeah. And that's, that's my general yeah. feeling on life. In, it's, it's just... Because it's we have social media, yeah. because we have online instant news, everything just looks worse. Yeah, and everyone's exposed to more. I think yeah, I think yeah. that is like the, one of the main things is that there's just so much access to the information, and with a lot of, it's easy to get bogged down with news that isn't real. Yeah. So like they'll overinflate something. So like they'll be like, oh, this person's killed somebody, but they also liked video games, and it's like. Yeah. Might not be a correlation there. You've just picked one of their interests. Well, it was like the uh, recent thing with. Do you see the Roseanne thing? Oh yeah, my friend told me about that last night. Yeah, so they were going to remake Roseanne. Yeah, which is a good idea. You know, getting yeah. John Goodman back on TV is is something everybody wants. Mm. Um, they were going to reboot Roseanne. Roseanne, the main mm. woman, tweeted something racist. Yeah. So they cancelled it. That was the top news story, for like three days yeah. on most news networks during that time there was like a coup in iran mm. like 60 people died the u.s had like pissed off north, north korea and all this kind of stuff and you're like those are news stories <laughs> not some woman randomly tweeting <laughs> and getting fired like <laughs> they, they do that far too often like yeah. the amount of times i've seen something like eminem's sad and yeah. it's like 
right? Well, there's war going off. <laughs> like it's it absolutely boggles me. Like it's to the point where I'm like, I because I, I, I get fed up with people starting petitions for things. Yeah. Oh yeah, I get them constantly now. And it's dappered off a little bit. Yeah. Like it maybe two years ago, it was mm. huge. Like everyone was doing. Mm. So I think maybe that's when like thirty eight changes or whatever it, that website is yeah. where you can set up your oh, petitions. So change like, dot org. Yeah, change yeah. org. That kicked off and everyone was doing it. It was like petition for jam sandwiches and shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. And I think they'll stop it off. But at the same time, like I kind of want a petition, which is just like, if a newspaper doesn't report news yeah. as like their main thing, they need to be called a magazine. Yeah. So like a newspaper like the Star yeah. would not be called a newspaper; it would be called a magazine, because that's what it is. It's entertainment. <laughs> And I feel like every news thing should have to have news removed. Yeah, yeah. Like if their main thing isn't actual news and it's like celebrity news, then just just cut that yes. off. It makes a, it it makes a distinction. So you either have to do more news, or you just have to stop doing news <laughs> because there'd be no point. You're not a newspaper. <laughs> I mean, there'd be no newspapers. Like, no, <laughs> literally, like, just the end. I feel like the newspaper. only newspaper you'd have is the Financial Times. Yeah. <laughs> because that's all it covers it just covers finance <laughs> it's like this is financial news what is in it financial news you know congratulations to, to be fair that change.org there is some funny petitions I've seen oh. like I, I saw one change.org to stop change.org and I was that's, like <laughs> I was like that is a very meta it's like, gone too far yeah <laughs> there another one it, when everyone were dying that year like oh, all yeah, celebrities yeah, and they yeah. were just death after death after death and they were one to um, lock up David Attenborough for his own safety. <laughs> and I was like, yes. God, I, I don't know. I, t- I want to support petitions. Yeah. I do still sign petitions and, and things like that. But to me, an online petition at the minute is like, it's like throwing a, a thimble of water on a fire. It's pointless because I think them rules or something like, he's got to have like 500,000 signatures and yeah. people assume that once that goes through, then it gets taken well, care of. Well, they changed them, didn't they? Did they? They changed the rules because of all the online petitions yeah. which were happening. Um, this happened recently in the the US as well, I think. Oh, was it? No, it was North Lincolnshire. Yeah. That was it. Yeah, I'll, I'll get to that. Um, yeah, so they, they there was like a rule. You have to get so many petitions to have it looked at. Right. And then you have to get so many signatures to actually have it discussed right. in the House of Commons. And that's something like 500,000. That's, yeah. that's a, a numerous number. But they changed the number to actually have it looked at. Right. For it to be kind of even viewed. Yeah. Because they were getting so many, because it's so easy to reach 100,000 if it's just like something. Yeah. Like, and you can get 100,000 signatures yeah. online if it's got like a reasonable message to it or it's funny. So it's like yeah. the whole build what? a Death Star thing. That got like 100,000. Yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> like if you're doing it online as well, like it's easily bothered. Like yeah. you could just get yeah. fake signatures and in 5,000, you're not going to check them all. Yeah. But the one which, um, hit me hard recently because obviously from Scunthorpe originally which is North Lincolnshire mm. um, because nobody wants us so you can't be Humberside or Lincolnshire you've got to be North Lincolnshire yeah. trapped in the middle um, so they had a thing where you you can get a petition locally get it signed send it away this which meant yeah. like a lot of kids were doing it yeah. teenagers were doing it because they wanted things looked at and that kind of thing so they've changed it now that it has to be it's the same number but it has to be over 18 Hmm. so it has to be a hundred or thousand or whatever yeah. over 18 signatures Fair. which you're like hang on a minute people who are under 18 hmm. who have things they want looked at or like social movements which they want to be involved in who can't drive yeah. can't get access because North Lincolnshire is quite a large area full of villages full of towns there's no chance <laughs> there's no chance they're going to get the amount of signatures needed on their own yeah without funding to get anything looked at. So it basically cuts off a whole generation who are in college yeah. just getting interested in stuff like politics. Yeah. And like I think one of the rules is like you have to be eighteen to present the signature. It was all these things of like Yeah. How are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Well, it's, <laughs> like, so it's obvious uh, yeah. why you're doing this. <laughs> but what well, you know, how is that a progressive thing to actually have? Well they don't want it, do they? they no. just... They like how it is at the moment, and they don't want it changing. So yeah. it's kind of more of a. I'm looking forward to like the next general election. Yeah, that'll. Because Lincoln's going to be an interesting one. Yeah. Because Labour won, and Labour doesn't win in Lincoln. Yeah. In general. Is he normally conservative? 
since I've been here, it's been a conservative city. Ah, fair. And it's because of all the landowners. Yeah. All your farmers, all your, your kind of like your, your big historical buildings yeah. are all owned by people who tend, tend to vote conservative because it benefits them, so they vote conservative. Um, and then, yeah, la- last year Lincoln won, mainly because everyone started absolutely hating Carmel County to mm-hmm. such a point where even conservatives were like, no, fuck Carmel County. <laughs> um, but I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens, like, roll around next time mm-hmm. of whether that will stand. Because if it stands, that suggests, like, a huge social change in yeah. the city. Whereas if it doesn't, it suggests, like, a blip, yeah. that kind of thing. But, yeah, con- like Lincolnshire is a conservative county. Okay. It's, it's one of those realities yeah. it's just a conservative county um it tends to be yeah lincoln goes half and half yeah and it does kind of drip but mainly just because of the student population and then you get places like um like grimsby and, and Art, which will vote labor ah, yeah. but that's because they're industry towns yeah and you've got the docks and you've got the steelworks so they're full of working class people who vote labor yeah whereas like lincoln just... they say it's like because sheffield probably like yeah. used to be in it's an ex steelwork yeah. town basically so everyone just votes labor yeah without cause it's, basically it's the same with like hull yeah you know, like hull tends to to vote more left yeah and, and you know you've got nottingham mm. like everything kind of surrounding it mm. is is very working class and then lincoln is is usually conservative just because there's nothing here mm. no industry which has kind of been for the last hundred years or so which yeah. is reasonable enough for people to go oh yeah Maybe I'll vote late this time. <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 a it's a gradual change. The um the MP came to my house the other day. Oh really? Like, yeah, it was really weird. It, it was one of them adult moments where <laughs> I I opened it's the, the door. Those things where you open the door, it's like oh crap, I'm legal voting. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I come downstairs. It's like obviously I work night, so I was yeah. like, I woke up, I was like in a big daze, nice. and then this bloke in a suit just like, oh hi, I'm your MP. I was like. Hello? It's like, are you Mr. Smith? I'm like, I'm James Smith, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then he starts... Like, you, in your brain, you just like, I need to make this distinction. distinction. I can't be Mr. Smith. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not an adult. <laughs> and he's like, oh, are you the house owner? I was like, so, no, I don't know. <laughs> and then he was like, he was just asking me all these questions about the neighbourhood and stuff. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not a functioning adult. You, you can't ask me these questions. <laughs> I'm just an adult in training. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm still trying. <laughs> still got the training wheels on. <laughs> I don't know. I always worry about like, people coming to my door. Yeah. Like, I, I don't tend to answer my door now unless I know something's yeah. coming. If, unless I've got like a parcel coming. Just because they might charity works in the area. Yeah. First off. And then, yeah, like voting season comes around. I get literally every, leaf, every leaflet. Yeah. Because I'm in a major populated area and we're near the voting station as well. Yeah. So you just get them. They they give you all your leaflets, and it's like I just don't want to get into an argument on like the street. Yeah. Like I've I've talked down religious charity people because I've been tired. <laughs> <laughs> there was a there's a fantastic moment, which in a way, in some ways, I regret, but at the same time, I don't regret. Yeah. So we were in uni. Yeah. And it was like it must have been like seven a.m. on a Sunday, <laughs> right? <laughs> I've been at work because yeah. I worked worked nights in a nightclub, and I, I've been at work on the Saturday. I was knackered. It was seven a.m. Get a knock on my door. Go downstairs, and it's a Jehovah's Witness, and he's there with his kid, and he he wants to talk, and I'm not in the mood to talk at yeah. all. So I'm like politely just like, oh, I just woke up, you know, not really kind of interested. He just kept going. Yeah, and my brain just kind of kicked into gear of like, I'm not in the mood for this. This is going to go badly. <laughs> and essentially, we were stood there, and I felt so bad, mainly just because his kid was there, and he was on about like different things and like the whole Jehovah's Witness mantra of, of, of like the Watchtower mm. and, and how we cause our own suffering and all that kind of stuff. And I basically just ended up calling God a sadist. <laughs> and I was like, and I, so he was like, "Why would you think that?" And I'm like, well, if he's all powerful and all knowledgeable, and still suffering continues then surely he's a sadist. That's the only reason, any logical reason would yeah. be is that that, that was to do. And he's like, that's a very interesting way of you. <laughs> he just didn't quite know how to respond yeah. to it. I'm just stood there looking at the kid just like, I'm really sorry. <laughs> it's like, this, this is the conversation we're having. And then I just closed the door and I went back to bed. And it's like, I kind of regret it because like, he just wants to talk about his religion yeah. and, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, like, it's 7am on a Sunday. Yeah. I've lost all politeness at this point in time. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love it. Like, I'm sure you've noticed, but I, I like having a good argument. Yeah. Like, like with George, his friend, like, we argue relentlessly <laughs> whenever we can. We had a conversation the other day that must have lasted about three hours. Yeah. Just talking about which is better for three or four in Vegas. We both agreed that they were both good games and we this, both liked the games. This is what I notice about you when you argue. It's like, you'll agree with their point, yet yeah. you'll still argue. <laughs> it's my favourite thing to do. Like, I'll always go for like, because I know, the, the reason I do it is because I know when somebody's arguing yeah. and they're stuck on a point, if you agree with them, yeah. it annoys them so much that they start they losing... feel like you're understanding yeah. it, so like you're just placating it. Yeah. So you're just like going, yes, I agree with that point. But blah 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 blah, and then the dudes go, "Yes, but if you agree, so why are you putting it?" In? <laughs> it's like my my all time favorite thing to do is arguing a point that I know nothing about. Oh yeah, I love it. Yeah, so like if somebody's really knowledgeable about something, and then you just start going, "Yeah, but what about this?" and it's totally bonkers and nothing to do with yeah. what they've said, yeah. it annoys them so much more. <laughs> I find the best the best way to deal with that is like. Especially when they're getting really like angry or passionate about yeah. something, the best way to deal with any of that is to feign naivety. Yeah. Of like instantly, it's like I'm just going to become the dumbest person yeah. in the world because then you have to explain it like you would to a child. Yeah. And at some point, you're going to realize what you're saying has gotten weirder yeah. because you're angry about it. <laughs> it's like no, we're just going to gradually break this down until the point where you're like, no, it's you put a cat in a hat, and it's like, wait, what? <laughs> It's great. When you get to the point where you're talking absolute bullshit, yeah. is the best point of the argument. Because it's the point where they realise you're taking the piss, yeah. or they'll carry on, yeah. and then you can just go as mental as you want. I mean, like, I don't generally argue. Like, oh, I, I love it. I, I, I never think... The way, <laughs> the way I do it is the terminology which my parents use, yeah. which is, they don't argue, they discuss. Mm. Which is wrong, they do argue. That's just... It's being human. They didn't want to admit it to kids that they were arguing. Um, so whenever I get into things, it's like if someone's like full on arguing, I don't argue. Yeah. I just become very closed yeah. to everything and just try and kill it. That's yeah. essentially all I do. So it's like, no, I'm just going to be stupid. Yeah. You know, you're going to say your piece. You're going to get to it. I'm going to disagree at the end. Yeah. But I'm not going to argue because <laughs> it's too much effort to put into this situation. I'm just going to step back. And maybe that's why I can't talk to kids because kids don't know. Yeah. Don't know when to stop. Oh, I'm terrible. Like, I can't talk to children. Mm. They terrify me. They used to terrify me. Like, I still hate kids. Yeah. Like, he says with nephews and nieces. <laughs> no, like, my nieces he I doesn't can deal hate you with. you that much. <laughs> <laughs> Three of you. One of you is alright. <laughs> You've got to guess which one. <laughs> but, um, no, like, my nieces I'm fine with because yeah. I've watched them grow up and the family so that they've got that on their side <laughs> like okay. actual kids i'm turned into my dad and yeah. it's it's real bad like my dad used to do this thing where kids would sit on his front garden right and like kick balls about and stuff they weren't doing anything wrong they were being general kids yeah. and my dad would stand whip by off in boom just like looking out the window <laughs> and i'd be like dad you look proper weird stop it and he's like yeah but i'm waiting for him to do something and then, and then I was like, then what are you going to do? And I never got him, like, why he did it. But I caught myself doing it the other day because some kids were Just sat watching. outside. Yeah. And I was like, not as creepily as, you know, in dark. But, like, Shadowed in the dark. I was just, like, looking <laughs> in my window waiting for these kids to do something so I could go outside and be like, oi, pack it in. I mean, yeah, I do that. Like, my, my, my bedroom window overlooks the road where, like, school kids walk yeah. along. And if there's, if there's some loud kids... Yeah. I'll, I'll be watching. Yeah. I don't even know what I'm looking for. Like, if, if they, they could probably kick my car, and yeah. I still wouldn't go outside yeah. and confront them about it, because I just can't be asked. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm watching, it's like, no, I just want a visual record about this, so I know what happened. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly what I do. I don't know. <laughs> Is that age thing? I, think, I don't know. I don't know. feel like, you, like, at what point did we start doing that? I don't, I, honestly, <laughs> I, like, I think since I started paying bills, because I'm like, I, I paid for this. <laughs> <laughs> you, you your responsibility yeah. continue you're like no this this is my problem yeah now. I'm just like nah I I I earn that not you stop sitting on my maybe it's like a I don't know maybe it's like a danger thing because the way I'd I'd kind of balance it would mm. be it's like when you're out drinking yeah and you see someone who's too drunk or being loud yeah your brain automatically clicks and goes keep an eye on that yeah like that needs to be looked at 
at some point just to make sure it's not going any worse and nobody's going to get hurt. Like that's my brain automatically goes into that. And yeah. I think maybe that's the same thing with kids. I'm like, <laughs> they're being loud. Someone's going to get hurt. <laughs> if something gets hurt and the adult watching them, they're not even my kids, but at the same time, I'm going to have to step up, do a thing. <laughs> Responsibility mode kicks in. Yeah. I, then, I think that's weird though, because like, with teens, yeah. or like, maybe pre-teens, yeah. I'll do that. But if it's like much younger, I'll just completely ignore it. Yeah, like, I don't know, if they're much younger than that, I'm like, what are you doing outside? Go inside. I just let them be. Play Buckaroo. It's like, if I saw a Play toddler the on the street, even if it was crying, I wouldn't know what to do. Yeah. I'd just be stood there like... It's, that oh, terrifies me when dog. you see, like, a little toddler walking. Oh, yeah. And I'm just like, because like, like you say, I got the nieces, so it's like, I, I work at mum and dad's and you overlook there's this car park so living like a flat yeah. and uh, the other day just a toddler just walked out and, like behind a car in a car park and I was like there is no adults around here so I was like looking at it for a while and then all of a sudden this like adult came out and I was like but for like 30 seconds I was like I'm gonna go out in a second <laughs> like it really it's, I think I've had it happen in like stores yeah. so like there's like a lost kid yeah. I'm, I, I don't know how to handle it yeah. Like I, because I, I mean, I'm the youngest. Yeah. In my in my family, um, and the people who are younger than me, I never really had to deal with as kids. Yeah. So it's it's that thing. I have no maternal instinct of how to deal with a child. Yeah. How to interact with a child or anything like that. So when you see him, it's like, all right, so you're gonna be upset. I can't deal with upset people who are adults. Yeah. I have no idea how to deal with. You. I don't <laughs> even know what to do with you. Like, if I did approach you, yes. like, what do I, like, do I call the police? Yeah. <laughs> do I, yeah, what's do I just shout out? Do I look around? You know, it's like, oh, I'm lost. And I'm like, fantastic. Find your way. <laughs> I don't know. That's probably quite a terrible thing. I've yeah. never learned that. But, yeah. That's, yeah. Well, yeah, I, I'd be terrible. Like, I'm the exact same. Like, I am awful with kids. Yeah. Like, I just can't. Like, I mean, I don't know how to talk to them. Like, my niece, I just talk to them like adults. Yeah. It's <laughs> like, it's really weird. I mean, that's, that's that's all I'd be able to do. Yeah. I mean, I've been at houses where they've had kids and like, so you be sat down and then the kid will be playing or mm. something and then they'll bring you something. Yeah. And I'm like, cool. Mm. You've handed me it. I can't understand you because you can't talk properly. Yeah. What do I do with this now? Yeah. And like my, my ex, she was, like, she was fine with it. Like, she'd just <laughs> play, you know, but she had two younger siblings. It's like, I'm sad, like, I don't know how you do it. Like, I'm an imaginative person, but with the fact that I can't understand them, I'm just, all I'm worried about is upsetting them. <laughs> my, like, my youngest niece, my right she was born and she started learning how to crawl, she used to come and give us, like, toys. Yeah. And it was, like, a squishy bouncy one, so I used to throw it at a wall, and she used to go and get it. Right. So I'm just, she just keeps throwing it. That's like having a dog. Yes, but then my sister came in and went absolutely <laughs> <hit> shit <laughs> for playing fetch with a door. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I don't know what to do. That's, that's, I feel like that's the best defense. If you don't know what to do, treat him like an animal. I'd be an absolute great father. I'd just be doing that all the time. <laughs> it would be that thing of like, all right, cool, it needs feeding. All right, well, here's a bowl with yeah. some food. There, there was a thing. Someone posted on Facebook the other day. It was like, most of parent life is just slicing up grapes. <laughs> yeah. And I was just stood there like, why are you slicing up grapes? Oh, so they don't choke. That's, like, it hadn't occurred to me in any way, shape, or form. So guarantee, if up to that point, a child had come up to me and asked for a grape, I'd have just given them a grape. You can probably <laughs> give them a grape. I think he's one of them really over-paranoid ones. <laughs> You're like, here's a grape. It's yeah. a whole apple. Fuck it. I don't get yeah. <laughs> you asked for it. You're going to deal with the consequences if this goes wrong. <laughs> here's a melon. I'm not even quite. Can I have a knife? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a, a great Terry Pratchett thing where he's like, death gives the kids a, a sword. Yeah. And they're like, well, you can't give it a sword. And it's like, it's a gift. And like, no, but it's dangerous. It's educational. It's like, what if it hurts itself? That'll be a very important <laughs> lesson. It's like, I, yeah, I definitely shouldn't be allowed to raise children. Yeah, I'm saying, like, just, I'd be awful. <laughs> like, I just couldn't. I can I, barely look after myself. I feel like I'd be okay, but only once they reached 18. <laughs> yeah. It's like, at that point, it's like, cool. We, we've dealt with everything, yeah. you know. You, you're an adult now. At this point, I can start to discipline. I mean, <laughs> I used to look after Phoebe for that's my sister's. Like when she was at work, she was in a, uh, she's a teacher, so she used to work quite a long hours. So sometimes I used to look after her a few days a week because I were unemployed. And basically, between 
I don't know, six months and said two. Yeah. It's basically just watching Peppa Pig all day. So yeah. yeah. I mean that doesn't sound like a bad life. Right? I mean, it's like Stockholm syndrome. Is <laughs> it, it really is. That and Ben and Ollie. I got so addicted to Ben and Ollie when they were looking after her, like it gets to the point where I'd seen a new episode that I'd not seen before and I get really excited. And I'm like she's so like, Oh, it's time to eat I'm like shh Ben and Ollie's like I'm gonna watch Ben and Ollie. Yeah. Next. It was, it's yeah. great. I, I don't think I know what like I know because it's like obviously like shows and stuff. But I I don't know what's age appropriate. <laughs> like, like it's a baby. Clearly, it can watch something like Tom and Jerry. Yeah. It's like they won't understand Tom and Jerry, and it's too complex for them. It's like eh, I don't know. I feel like we could watch Tom and Jerry. <laughs> well, it's like I try to get like I love The Simpsons. Yeah. I've got all the DVDs yeah. and the box sets and everything, and. I remember growing up watching it it's from as young as I possibly could yeah. and then I was like right I'm going to get Scarlet into it and I just put it on and I put on which one were it like the first one I just happened to put on was the homophobia episode right okay where it's when Homer goes to the uh, toy shop and he meets the guy who yeah. um, turns out he's gay and then Homer starts thinking Bart's gay yeah. and there's so much offensiveness in that episode I was like how was this aimed I know it wasn't primarily aimed at adults no, no. but it's for that time it genuinely was for just kids they just said it wasn't but then at the same time I feel like you can watch that as a kid because you won't understand it yeah like it's, it's that whole um, Ren and Stimpy thing yeah like that show was brutal yeah there's so much sex and violence in it yeah but you don't notice that because you're a child. I, I don't understand though. Like, if you did how... notice that, I'd be worried. <laughs> yeah, like, there's a bit with the... Can you remember the Whacking Day episode in The Simpsons? Yeah. That were another one that yeah. really caught us off guard. Because there's a bit where he pulls out the stick <laughs> and he's like, what do you think, Marge? Should I whack slow or fast? And she's like, oh, start off slow, <laughs> then go fast. And I'm like, this how I could not... Show. Not... <laughs> yeah, I'm like, sorry, Marge, didn't realise you were into that kind of... <laughs> I, mean, I, I think it's... It's one of those, like, this This is probably, like, the saddest part of, of realising that you're old. Yeah. Is when you've watched something, and this can happen, like, in our own generation as well. Yeah. So, you watch something as a kid, or you watch something as a teenager, and yeah. you love it. So, like, you know, whatever you're into, and you're, like, you were The Simpsons. Yeah. Uh, me was, like, there's this stop-motion film I watched as, as a child called Flat, uh, it was Pinch Griff's. Grand Prix. Mm-hmm. It's about like a little duck who goes into like a, a Grand, Grand Prix race. They build a car. It's fantastic. I showed it to my ex and she didn't enjoy it. Is that why she's your ex? No. <laughs> yes. Like, get out. It's like, no, it's fucking dumb. But like she didn't enjoy it. She didn't find it interesting. And I was like, that's, and it's the same with like The Simpsons. Like, so if you show that to someone who's younger than you and they don't enjoy it, yeah, that's heartbreaking. Yeah. Because it's like, this is something you really care about and you've grown up with and then you show it and they just don't see it. Yeah. They can't see how good it is for you, yeah. at least. And I think that's like one of the saddest things about growing old. Yeah. Is that showing someone something you were so passionate about and interested in yeah. and then just shrugging it off. Yeah, like, it's happened a couple of times. Like, like none of them like Thunderbirds. I yeah. love the Thunderbirds. If I could pilot Thunderbird 3, that is what <laughs> I'd be doing right now. But, I mean, you, could. you know, You've still got time. I'm I mean, not yeah. thirty yet, yeah, James. You got I'll start learning to fly spaceships and then yeah. I'll build one. And build one. Yeah. Great. <laughs> but like they didn't. But then on the other side, they're all obsessed with the Simpsons, and that to me is like something that I can connect with yeah. them. Yeah. So it's like it's really nice to see them enjoying something that I enjoyed. So like they do, they do it with quite a few of my hobbies as well. Like it really annoys my sister because yeah. Phoebe is a little nerd now. <laughs> And she obsessed with Marvel. Right. And course, knowing yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, she'll be like, oh, I want to watch Iron Man. <laughs> and she'll just, and my sister will be like, she'll phone up every so often and be like, I hate you. Because you just turned her. Watching Iron Man again. Yeah. So, like, she came in the other day and she phoned me up and she was like, um, have you watched In Ever- Evolution? Yeah. She, my sister phoned up. She's like, have you been watching Evolution with Phoebe? I was like, not that I'm aware. And she was like, oh, um, cause oh, she walked in and it was on and she went to turn it over because it was the bit with the dog like oh, the, yeah, the yeah, weird yeah, dog yeah, thing yeah. in the cupboard and she went to turn it over because she was like this is not age appropriate for my child and then Phoebe was like no don't turn it over it's an Uncle Bobby film uh... <laughs> and I was like no <laughs> I've never watched this with her my uncle would like this yeah I'm going to watch this she's right yeah. I, I, yeah. I love them films it's a great film <laughs> 
yeah, I, I think that that'd be heartbreaking. Like having something which they don't, yeah. like they have no interest or something yeah. kind of thing. I don't like. I guess in a way, I I can see that with stuff like my parents were into, which I just mm. have no interest in. Yeah. But at the same time, there's a lot of similarities and and stuff where I'm like, yeah, you know, yeah, that, that connects. So I guess they had it as well, but it's just going to become harder and harder. I think. Mm. There's so much content out there now. Yeah. I mean, even in like children's shows, like you think of the things which we watched as babies. Yeah. And those shows just don't exist. I think between, like, this is Ben and Holly and Peppa Pig and all stuff like that for like when they're younger. But now that they get into like five and six, they're all into like really old shows. Like, uh, Scarlet's really into Scooby Doo, and yeah, yeah like. It, the older shows do kind of stay, I think. Like, it, Tom and Jerry is it's still going to run. Like, Not sure. Like, I know there's the one with the baby. Like, they're all babies now or something. Oh, right, okay. Um, I remember that one. Mickey, Mo- uh, Mickey Mouse's Clubhouse. That I was... mean, the only baby one I remember is the Muppet Babies. Okay. Which is <laughs> fucking weird. Yeah, <laughs> Like, looking back, that show is like, odd. <laughs> but, yeah. You kind of like watching it, it's like, alright, so they're puppets. They're very self aware that they're puppets, but now they're. They're babies. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I think the weirdest one for me, like the one that made me feel emotions the most when I was a kid, was the dinosaurs. Oh yeah, that yeah. was a great show. Yeah, like that should be still on. I, but like, I remember the last episode where they just all died. Yeah, yeah, and I was like, oh right, that's, that's the end of the show. Yeah, so everyone dies and they're all just like huddled together. <laughs> yeah. and you're like, this is a really brutal end to a. a that was dinosaurs is always one of those shows because we didn't have. Um, we didn't have like cable or anything. Mm. Like, we didn't have satellite, um, so it was one of those shows which we'd see advertised, yeah. but we'd never watch because yeah. we could just never get access to. It. Like we didn't get access to like The Simpsons and Friends till really late on. Yeah. Um, we must have been like teenagers by the time like we were able to watch any of that. So it was always one of those shows which just kind of like passed us by. Yeah. But we did have Cartoon Network, mm. and that was that was the one. That was... My, my favorite show as a kid was Batman the Animated Series. Oh, I remember going to school and like we'd set off 20 minutes early and then watch it at my sister's friend's yeah. house. Yeah, oh. that's such a good show. It's, it's, yeah. it's one of the few shows I've got on DVD. Yeah. Um, because it's just, it's so well done. Yeah. And so well animated. But yeah, like, same if I had a kid and I showed them Batman the Animated Series and they weren't <laughs> interested in it, I'd just be like, what is wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> you are not my child at this point. <laughs> And so I sat there, it's like, no, I want to go, you know, I want to go watch this. Like, no, fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it's not working out. <laughs> I'm done here. <laughs> I'm sure that, like, kids are, they do tend to go with what they're shown. So yeah. it's like, it'll have been, you'll have been shown that, or, you know. So it's like, the, the thing that terrifies me the most about, like, the new generation with stuff is they've got iPads. Yeah. So, like, all my nieces now, they've got iPads. That's, that's terrifying. Yeah, and like, I'll I'll go in the room when I go back home, and they'll all be sat on an iPad, and it'll just be like, this is weird. Like, I had one channel mm-hmm. where I watched whatever was on at that point. Yeah. Where, whereas they're like, I don't like this. I want to watch this. Yeah, and it's and there's some weird shit as well. Like, have you seen all the the like YouTube stuff that kids watch? I've seen some of that. I've seen. I saw an article which was about um, being careful what your kids were watching on YouTube yeah. because there's people who remix Peppa Pig episodes. <laughs> yeah, I see. And I was like, that's fantastic. Yeah. That is, I mean, it's awful yeah. if your child stumbles <laughs> across that. But at the same time, this is going to teach you to be a better parent yeah. because you're going to have to pay attention to what your kids are doing. Yeah. But at the same time, I was like, that is fantastic. Yeah. They've taken something so sweet and it just made it now your kid's <laughs> going to stumble across something it's going to ruin them for life. It's... <laughs> well, then we had, I mean, we had that because we were yeah. like, you know, you'd be flicking through channels and you just yeah. stumble across them. You're like, what the hell is this? <laughs> it's true. And they're all, like, more lenient back days. Yeah. Just, like, just flicking through and then Die Hard would be on. Like, yeah. all right, it's four o'clock in the afternoon. Let's watch Die Hard. We're watching Die Hard now. That's, that's you know, one of those balances. <laughs> but, yeah, I went, I went back and, my, like, Phoebe, she was like, oh, come and watch this for me. So I sat down and started watching it. And they were, like, just this woman and this bloke dressed. One was dressed as Elsa, one was dressed as Spider-Man. Right. Spider-Man were pregnant. And then the whole thing was, yeah, and it was like, it's Spider-Man giving birth, and there was these really weird noises, and I was like, are you, should you be watching this? And my sister was like, yeah, apparently that's all kids watch. And I was like, this is fucking weird. I always love it when, like, 
someone discovers a kid doing something, and that, and you ask the kid if yeah. they should be watching. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's like, you no, are I'm not going to give me the answer which I need. I need to ask someone else. <laughs> should you be watching this <laughs> again? Great parent figure. <laughs> It's the same with anything. Like I think everyone does that. It's like you, you kid, and they ask the kid the first, yeah. and you're like, the kid's not gonna know. <laughs> Has no view of age and appropriateness and yeah. ratings. It's like, it's like, should you be playing this? Yes, yes, I should. <laughs> I feel like I should be playing this. Oh man, that's terrible. Uh-huh. I, I don't think. I think it's interesting that we have to learn to grow up. Yeah. In a way, I think as a kid, you give, you you think of it as a given. Yeah. Like that one day you'll just wake up and you know. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's that thing you don't teach kids and is that you need to learn. Mm. And even like now, yeah, we we're learning to grow up. Yeah. I don't think it'll ever end. No, I, I like I said at the beginning, like I think it's just one of them things where growing up means learning to pretend to be an adult. Yeah. So like, the way I act around you as a friend is completely different how I act around kids because yeah. they want to see an authority figure. So I can't run around being drunk. Or... <laughs> well, you could. Yeah. But, yeah, it wouldn't be wouldn't be ideal. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. It's it's one of those, one of those sad life lessons. But I think I think it's comforting to know that it doesn't end. Yeah. I mean, I can foresee myself getting to like fifty, yeah. and still learning how to do things and yeah. and where things are and all that kind of stuff. Maybe that's what we need to teach kids. Yeah. It's like we don't tell them to just grow up, because that's that's that's, what, that's the thing you're told a lot as a kid. So, oh, no, you, you need to grow up. It's like, it takes a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it didn't happen overnight. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's the code word for you need to pretend to be okay. I think that's the code word for short. Sure. <laughs> like, I'm tired. Go to bed. Pretend you're fine. Deny your emotions. <laughs> Slowly develop a tumour. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, um, it's a healthy way of doing it. Just yeah. repress your emotions. It's, I think that looks a good message to end on that. Like. Yeah. Repress your emotions. Repress your emotions and you'll be fine. You know, stand alone and uh, repress everything. Pretend you're fine. And that's good. And remember, we all die alone. We all die alone. We're all born alone and we <laughs> die alone. Adulta! <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for coming, James. And thank you for coming. Participating in my you know, podcasting. Mm. Yeah. Any last words? Uh, no. Yeah. Just that's repress it. your emotions. Yeah. We'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> there we go. I hope that went too bad.